All right, so now we are going to take a look at how you perform a two-way between subjects ANOVA using Excel. So again, the data structure is critical. So we see here that our data are formatted in a way where our columns contain the information for factor A, which has three levels, and our rows contain the information for factor B, which has two levels. Again, our data is balanced. So we have 20 observations within each level of A, and we have 30 observations within each level of B. So this is a balanced design. Again, Excel needs the design to be balanced for its ANOVA function to work without going into more complex means of analysis. So our data is structured the way we need it to. We would now come into our data analysis, and we're going to perform the two-factor with replication. So let's take a look at how we're going to do all these things. So here's how it would look to start. So it's using a 0.05 alpha level. We're going to need to select our data. Our data are located here starting in A1 through D21. So we're going to highlight that data range. Rows per sample, we're going to look at the number of rows we have here. And we have 10, right? Because notice 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This sample here ends at 10. Okay. So we're going to say we have 10 rows per. And then we're going to leave that alpha level. I'm going to stick the output right here so we can, again, see it more easily. And once we've done this, we can perform our analysis. So here our output's going to be a little larger because there's more going on. So let's take a look. So notice here what it's done is it's broken down a table for each level of factor B. And you can see the factor A within each level of B, right? You can also then see the total for factor A, irrespective of factor B. So notice this is where you have 20 per, right? And you can see the totals for B, irrespective of A, which is where you have 30 per, okay? So here we see the sample sizes, the sums, the averages, and the variance within each level. So these are kind of the values that would be the averages for your cells. Here to here and here. So those values would be the within cell means. And then these values would be your margins. So this would show you the marginal effect of B, the marginal effect of A. So the first thing we do is we come down here and we see this F test for what's called sample. Now this is factor B. That's really what this contains and the way that we specify it here. So factor B accounts for no sum of squares, and we can quickly see why that is in our table when we look at the average. Notice factor B1 averaged across levels of factor A has an average of 4.7, and B2 is the same. So there is no difference as a function of factor B here. And so our sum of squares accounted for are zero with the one degree of freedom because factor there's two levels of factor B. And so this is not an effect. Okay, our columns are our factor A here, as we've written it out. Okay, and it accounts for 7.6 sum of squares with two degrees of freedom, three minus one. It is not a significant test either. And finally, we have our interaction. So this is the A times B interaction, which is going to have two degrees of freedom because three minus one times two minus one is two times one is 2. It accounts for 38.8 sum of squares. So these are the differences that exist within all six, all six of these means. Okay, it's testing those means for differences. Okay, so let's go ahead and just highlight these here. The interaction means are those. Okay, the effect of B is seen in these means. And the effect of A is seen in these means. So there you go. So that's the structure here of what we're testing. Okay. And so B doesn't account for anything because the means are equal. A does isn't a significant difference between these three means. And the A by B interaction is looking at all six of these. And although there are some differences, none of those differences would be what we call significant 
looking at p-value of 0.11. It's not less than or equal to 0 0.05. So our um, terms all here, and here is your degree of freedom in the denominator. That's your error term, right? So sometimes here you'll see this called error instead of within. And this is going to have um, the degrees of freedom that start with 59, but you're going to subtract away these 5, which leaves you with 54. And so that is the between subjects two-factor analysis of variance using Excel. So we could look into, you know, how do you follow up some of these tests if you needed to, if you had something significant, how do you probe further to see which ones are different. And that's where you could do some post hoc tests. And so we'll later look at how we could do some post hoc analyses to follow up if we have a significant um, main effect or a factor with more than two levels or a significant interaction. But that is the basic structure for a two-factor analysis of variance.